Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Um, today's video is a um, lap comparison between two similar laps that I ran. Um, let's see. Two similar laps. I'm going to pull these up right now. But two completely different lines. And so we're, we're pulling this data from AIM. We're going to be able to go ahead and tell exactly where we were losing time we are where we were gaining time um, from the other lap and uh, and in the aim data we're gonna be able to see how fast we were taking turns and it's just a lot of data that uh, is pretty dope that will actually help you cut down your lap times if you use it correctly um, and I think that um, just toying around with this um, is going to be very beneficial so if we look at this uh, the green lap is going to be the PB lap and the red lap is going to be the lap that was 0.2 seconds off so let's go ahead and run the clip so green lap here we go is the PB again red is the one that was 0.2 seconds off. So heading down, you see red riding further out wide, further eh, further out wide than uh, the green lap. Turning in earlier, maybe the green lap was a late break, um, late break tactic. But um, I did, uh, I was told that turn one, you really don't want a late break. You want to carry as much momentum exiting as possible. Um, Again, two different lines entering turn three over here. Or, uh, yeah, this turn, sorry, turn two. Red's holding it inside, green swinging wider. And uh, we'll see who got the better run onto the straight when we, when we look at uh, the data in AIM. But going up to Omega, once again, two different lines. So the lap consistency was just not there. And maybe uh, what I'm thinking it was, was just not being familiar with the track and not being comfortable with my line. Now the red lap was done um, on the last session of the day and conditions were getting better than session three, but it was still warm outside and still a little greasy. Um, but at that point, I felt like my I understood the track a little better, but we will dive deeper into um, the mistakes I was still making in three and try and put together a uh, quote unquote perfect lap for uh, comparing these two laps together. But you see green swinging way wide as almost like uh, maybe I had some oversteer or uh, missed the braking zone altogether. But uh, then red misses the apex going over the hill right there. So a lot of mistakes, just a lot of inconsistency, you know. So got to clean it up a little bit next time, but, you know, we'll see. Uh, red swinging it wide, getting out there further. Now here we go, the apex for uh, turn nine coming up right now. You see green pushing a little deeper. You know, you think they'd set up the I'd set up the better apex with the with the PB lap, but that is in fact false. I set it up better with the red lap, and then on to the finish line straight. So, yep, inconsistencies you can see. Um, a lot of different lines, a lot of different uh, times. Obviously, you, we're going to be able to see where I was making up time and where I was losing time. So let's go head over to the AIM program and uh, go ahead and check that out. All right, guys, welcome back. All right, here we are back in the AIM program now. And uh, so the lap that is, let me scoot this over. Can I scoot that over? Apparently not. So the lap that is black, the dot that is, is it green or black? I can't fucking tell on this cheap-ass laptop. And then there's one that's green. So the one that's green is the lap from session four and the one that is the black or the dark green is going to be the pb lap so let's take a look at it heading down the straight 
let's back up a little bit here. Let's look at these speeds. So we're using GPS speed. The uh, lap from session four is 10 miles an hour slower at this point for some reason. Let's see what's going on. Yep, a whole 10 still. Right here, look at GPS speed. That's what I'm looking at. I have GPS selected and then gear selected. I can do a couple other things, um, but those I felt like were the most important to take a look at. So look at the gap ready. Um, I think it says the distance is 39, 38 feet from each other. Yep, 38 feet. That's pretty dope right here. Right here it tells you how far away you are pulling from the other person, from the other lap. So 73 feet gap that the uh, dark green dot has on the blue. Once again, green is the uh, PB lap. Gained a few more feet in that turn. So um, as we think about it, the green dot took a wide approach to turn two. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. I I'm not really too sure which line is better there. I thought maybe red would be better, but the data shows differently. Blue's starting to close that gap right there. Uh, entering turn three, maybe got a little better braking zone. Heading up into the Omega. The gap is closing dramatically. So uh, blue definitely had a better line, which I thought it would not. But clearly it does because now we're you know only 19 feet apart at one point. Heading out of Omega. Up over the hump. And blue is gaining ground. Um, most likely holding that inside line and getting on the throttle. Uh, wide open throttle faster is going to be the better option. You can see actually blue is up ahead now by 60 feet. <sighs> Sorry about that. Back to the film. Almost a 70 foot, or sorry, yeah, 70 foot gap between the two now. But the PB lap starts to reel it in. So clearly blue was not um, giving as much throttle through the turn as the PB lap was. Maybe a little bit of different variances in line as well, but going through the turn nine apex. Apexing right there, and we're looking at a difference of three and a half miles per hour. So three and a half miles per hour at the apex, we're going to find out how much that's magnified going down the straight by the time we cross the finish line. Just gaining distance if you look right here. Let's go back actually. Let's take a look at this. Shit. Fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. Maybe, just maybe, I think that the blue dot had a better line through nine. It may not show immediately, but let's take a look at this speed when they cross the finish line. Look at the gap. It's going to close. 25, 20, 30, 30. Wait for it. Now it starts to close. 40, 39, 38, 37, 36. If you look here, yep. So the blue line going through turn 9 is actually better than the PB lap. So just knowing this information, um, I'm not going to keep you guys, you know, going on with me, but this is going to show me exactly, like I said, what worked better than the other lap, and um, it'll show me how I should piece together um, a good lap for my next time out and see if it works. If it doesn't, then it doesn't work. Like, you know, you just go back to the drawing board and try some new lines, learn some new things. It's not a big deal. Ideally, obviously, you'd like to have somebody who has the same car as you, same setup, but 
that's kind of hard to find with the, in the F80 community, you know. Not too many guys are gutting out their cars. Not too many guys are as serious about tracking as I am. So it's kind of hard to find. Um, you know, there's guys everywhere across the world that are like dedicated like I am. But um, and here in Southern California, it's kind of hard to find an F80 like mine. So that's what I mean by that. I don't want to offend any of my followers or, or subscribers who are definitely hardcore track addicts. So uh, if you guys liked the video, uh, this pretty much was just a demonstration of um, the capabilities of AIM and what you can do um, to basically look over your data and learn from your data. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So if you guys have any questions or uh, want to see anything else done on AIM, uh, the AIM data, please let me know. Drop it in the comment section below and uh, we'll take a look at it or I'll take a look at it and um, see if I can learn more about it to go ahead and put out a video for it. Otherwise, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.